today we're going to talk about dimensional analysis. Now you might hear that and say, ugh, I don't want to do this. So it's actually something that's not too painful. Just the name sounds kind of painful. I don't know why they do that with math so much. Essentially, this helps you convert units. So if you want to change minutes to hours or hours to minutes, feet to yards, yards to miles, this helps make it easier and helps you know if you have done the problem correctly. Essentially, you're going to keep your units or your labels, essentially, in your problem when you do your work, and this will help you solve it. Let's just talk about a situation. So let's say that you're baking cookies, and you can fit 12 cookies on a cookie sheet, and it takes you 10 minutes to bake them in the oven. Let's just jot down that information. So problem talking about this might say, you can bake 12 cookies in 10 minutes. And you're just kind of thinking, I wonder how many cookies I could bake in an hour. So instead of saying 12 cookies per hour, I want to know how many cookies per hour. Let's write this. It's going to look like a fraction. Don't worry too much. It's not a very complicated one. Take your first amount there, 12 cookies, in 10 minutes. So those two things are equal to each other. Basically, you can bake 12 cookies in 10 minutes. And then you want to end up with cookies per hour. So the thing that we want to change is this minutes right here. In all the problems that we're doing today, we're just going to use some conversions between minutes and hours. And so let's jot this down here on the side. So if you have, so if we're dealing with time, basically one minute equals 60 seconds. And then another useful one is one hour equals 60 minutes. And then one day equals 24 hours. Sometimes it's helpful just to have this nearby. Okay, so we're basically comparing minutes to hours, because this is what we want right here. And I want you to think about there are 60 minutes in one hour, so I'm going to write 60 up here. And we're going to compare that to one hour. So just like with 12 cookies, being able to be baked in 10 minutes, 60 minutes is essentially the same thing as one hour. So you're allowed to write that as a fraction. And the reason I wrote the 60 minutes on top is because I started out with minutes right here on the bottom. And what you want to do is match it up so that they are diagonal from each other. And when you do that, it means that one of them is going to disappear. Because if you have something on the top, and something on the bottom, and it's a fraction, and you're multiplying, you can cross those out, and they reduce out. So let me erase this. Okay, so we're going to end up with minutes crossing out. And we can, at this point, we also want to reduce our fraction, most likely. So 10 goes into 60 six times. So that's a 1. So when you multiply, you end up with 12 cookies. We don't have minutes anymore, so it's just times 6 over 1 times 1 hour. And multiply all your numbers together, we end up with 72 cookies over 1 hour. And the way you generally write it is you write the unit as cookies per hour. So when you see a slash, you usually say per. And that is your answer. Okay, you might think, ah, I could have figured that out without all this crazy dimensional analysis stuff. So the problems that we're starting out with are a little bit easier where you could maybe just do this in your head directly. However, I want you to practice using these steps because it will get harder and we're just starting out with something that's a little bit more simple 
so that it's easier to understand. Okay, so on number two, especially while we're doing distance learning, on number two, let's say that you ran three miles. Okay, so you ran three miles in 30 minutes. And you're wondering how many miles per hour you ran. It doesn't necessarily mean that you ran that many miles. This is just kind of an estimate of how many miles you could run in an hour. So on number two, let's start off with the first part of our fraction, put that on top. So we've got three miles, and that compares to 30 minutes. And we want to have miles no, not miles. Oh, we already have miles. A little confusion there. Okay, so we already have miles, and we want to know per hour. So miles isn't the part we want to change. We want to change the minutes to hours. So we're going to actually use the same units that we did last time. We're going to use these right here. So one minute, one hour equals 60 minutes. And very similar to last time, minutes is down here, which means I'm going to put minutes up here. So 60 minutes, and it's matched up with hour because we know that that is what we want in our end result based on this. 60 minutes equals one hour. So using dimensional analysis is just a really good way to know whether you multiply or divide certain units. 30 and 60 reduced to 1 and 2. Minutes and minutes reduce. So we end up with 3 times 2 on top, which is 6 miles. On the bottom, we end up with 1 hour. So once again, you probably would just want to write 6 miles slash hour, which is 6 miles per hour. Now let's say that you are really not feeling like reducing fractions today. Another way to do this is just grab your calculator. I still want you to show your units where they are crossing out, but you could just punch in all your numbers. So without reducing the fraction, you could go 3 times 60 over 30 and keep our units here. So it was miles on top, hour on the bottom. So if you wanted to go directly to that stage, you could. 3 times 60 is 180, and then if you punch into your calculator, 180 divided by 30, you end up with cha -ching, 6 miles per hour, same answer. In a lot of cases, you know, in real life, you'll probably know that it's not going to be this perfect numbers that are whole numbers, so you'll often end up with a decimal or a fraction, and if you end up with a decimal and you so it might be something like 6.1, and that's a great answer. And we'll talk more about that as we have some problems with decimals and fractions in the end result. The ones today are all going to be whole numbers. And let me know if you have any questions. Talk to you later.